All right, I'd like to welcome you to the syllabus video for New Testament History, Literature, and Theology. Uh, my name is Dr. Brian Tucker. I'm the course instructor, and uh, hopefully you have a copy of the syllabus in front of you as you watch this video. So you need to log into Blackboard and make sure that you have uh, version one of the syllabus in front of you. And uh, so class starts uh, Thursday, January 12th and goes from 2 o'clock to 4.30. And uh, my office hours are uh, 1 to 1.50 on Tuesday and Thursday. So the hour before class, I'm usually at my desk and you can catch me if you have questions. Um, I'm here beyond that, um, but those are times where you can be sure that I'm, I'm there and available. Uh, I don't spend time in class going over the syllabus. Uh, we jump right in. Uh, to the material, so uh, this is the only uh, place that we cover the syllabus material, so make sure you listen to this entire video. All right, so the course, uh, this course is an introduction to the history, literature, and theology of the New Testament. It addresses the background of the New Testament, historical issues of date, authorship, and occasion, literary issues of genre, structure and content, and theological themes that are unique to each book. Uh, course objectives. At the conclusion of the course, the student will recognize history, liter literary issues, and theological themes of the New Testament documents, evaluate different positions on crit crucial issues in New Testament studies related to history, literature, and theology, and apply the knowledge of New Testament issues to their personal life and the life and ministry of the church. So our texts uh, for the class, first we'll be using uh, Kostenberger. The thing to keep in mind here is uh, this is the second edition not the first edition. Uh, the second edition just came out and so you'll need to make sure that you have the right version. A second is uh, we finally uh, get to use uh, the t, t Clark Handbook to Social Identity in the New Testament. Uh, I've been wanting to be able to use this for the last uh, couple uh, of uh, years but um, it just came out in paperback so it's uh, affordable now so looking forward to uh, uh, getting in, in that uh, with you in class um, uh, this semester. Uh, and then the Lo Logos Bible software, uh, the Moody Logos Library. If you're looking for extra material to cover uh, some of the introductory date, authorship, occasion issues, uh, Carson and Moo's introduction to the New Testament is the standard work for that. And you're welcome to uh, add that uh, as well. Requirements uh, for the course, uh, final exam is 100%. Uh, of, of your class and so I know most of you are at the front end of your degree program and it might be a little daunting to think about 100% uh, of your uh, grade being based on an exam. Uh, however, there's a little more to it than just that. So now uh, the exam actually occurs in multiple uh, multiple stages and um, and so let me explain a little bit of how, how it will work. Uh, so here in a minute I will upload the study questions for the exam. And the study questions are broken into three sections. The first section are study questions from Cradle, Cross, and Crown. Just as it sounds, uh, these are questions designed to guide you through your reading that you want to answer. What are the dates and significance of the following events in the New Testament? The Syrian exile of, of Israel, the Northern Kingdom, the Babylonian exile of Judah. And so then you might expect that on the final exam you might have a question, what's the date for the Babylonian exile, something like that. Uh, but these help you, and so it's good to always not just get the answer uh, from your reading, but uh, page numbers so that you can always go back and check these in the future, because these are what I think are important details that need to be paid attention to. All right, so, uh, so you can see how that works on the first three pages of the study uh, sheet. Then the study questions on the TNT Clark Handbook to Social Identity in the New Testament. And here, it'll say chapter 9, for example. And so chapter 9 is what you're required to have read by January 19th. And, uh, and so then I have, in this case, four questions. Uh, what are the main approaches to the Beatitudes offered by scholars and by which, uh, in which does Esler uh, put forth as his preferred option? So look at these questions, have these while you're reading, and then answer those questions, and those become your study guide uh, for the exam as well. I'm not going to ask all four of those. Uh, you're going to have one question from each chapter, uh, maybe two, but generally one. And, uh, and so uh, that, that will help you uh, with, with that uh, as well. So make sure you answer those. And those also 
serve as the uh, uh, discussion uh, notes in class as well. So we'll talk about those topics uh, often in class as well. And so they have a dual purpose. And then the third section, which starts on page seven in the study uh, uh, guide, is the in-class lectures. Now the exam may not be limited to these, but uh, you can assume the vast majority of what you would see would be from these here. All right, so these are basically structured around uh, lectures that I that I give, and uh, and so the first one would be is what is Matera's definition of New Testament theology? Well, you don't know that right now. In class, PowerPoint, and there'll be a slide, and the slide will say Matera's definition of New Testament theology is this. And then you'll have that as your answer. And then you just uh, incorporate that into your your learning. Um, and then basically each of these, each number you can see there, is a um, is a different um, lecture. A couple of them are combined because they're maybe shorter lectures uh, or ones I'm not necessarily going to assess as much from. Um, but generally they follow uh, the lectures and that would help you with those. Uh, so uh, make sure that you're getting the answers to those questions then those sections then become your study sheet for the final exam. Okay, so generally speaking, there's nothing on the final exam that you wouldn't be aware of ahead of time. Uh, and uh, so you'll be doing some of this work uh, in groups, and I'll talk to you about that in terms of the assignment of the groups once I uh, get a sense of the class, and, uh, and I'll put you in your uh, uh, community groups uh, that you'll be able to help each other uh, and working on getting the answers for the material. All right, uh, let's go back to the syllabus on the grading section. Uh, you have the grading scale, it's a standard Moody grading scale. Uh, the attendance policy, uh, I expect you to be in class. Uh, if you're not going to be, you need to send me an email ahead of time so that I know. That doesn't mean that it's going to be excused, um, but it lets me know that you are not going to be there and I'm not wondering what's happened to you. Uh, plagiarism. Uh, the, you want to make sure that you do your own work uh, and uh, that shouldn't be a major uh, uh, temptation in this class with the way it's structured because the exam is going to be in class. Uh, the, the main area where I can see this is if you're not carrying your load uh, in your study groups. So there you want to make sure that you uh, uh, are doing your own work and uh, you properly cite uh, when you get information from uh, the, the handbook lecture notes, whatever, so that way in the future you don't misuse the material. A very prominent commentator uh, did not do that and was recently found to have plagiarized inadvertently on his commentaries he published. So always take good notes in terms of citations. Uh, no recording in class. Uh, everything you need for class I give you. <coughs> so um, I want there to be free flow of ideas and a place to create uh, uh, creative ways and to be critical about our, our settings, uh, but I don't want uh, uh, that uh, distraction to be there. Uh, if you have a learning disability, I need to know that uh, at the beginning of class. Uh, in terms of the connection with the MDiv outcomes, uh, for the MDiv students, uh, coverage of the basic content of the New Testament and it seeks to support that and so that you can also be involved in accurately um, uh, embodying Bible interpretation and the final exam helps us with that. Uh, in class, there's no food, uh, no social media, no smartphone use. Uh, so uh, if you bring food in class, I'm going to point it out and ask you to take it out. Uh, this is a non-negotiable for me. Uh, I want this to be an academic environment, and, uh, and so respect that, or you're going to be embarrassed. Uh, water bottles, fine, coffee, soda, those are all acceptable. Uh, so plan your eating breaks, eating time during the breaks, uh, before or, or after class. Checking social media or your smartphone are inappropriate during class. So your uh, laptop or your tablet should only be being used for taking notes. If you're going to be tempted or accessing software, uh, Bible software, if you're going to be tempted, then just don't do it. Just go with the old school pencil and paper. Uh, you might think you can do it quickly and get out, but you don't remember there's students sitting behind you or around you that see you doing it, and uh, plus it shows a lack of respect for the learning context. Uh, late policy. Uh, the nature of the class is, uh, is such that you don't have a late policy, but if uh, you were to not show up for the final exam, then you would have an issue there that you can read that on your own. 
All right, uh, so uh, we jump right into uh, the introduction uh, Thursday in class. We don't waste time with the syllabus. Um, and then you can see that on uh, the next week on Jan January 19th. That's when you're reading the uh, fourth chapter of Cradle, Cross, and Crown is due and the ninth chapter in the Handbook of Social Identity in the New Testament. So make sure you have those done. Uh, so there you would want to have your study questions answered and ready to go. So if you get called on, you're ready to answer questions. Okay. And then you can see how it follows from there. Each week, you'll see a class listed. So for example, January 19th, class listed as Matthew. Uh, you're expected to have read uh, the Gospel of Matthew in preparation for the class. Same thing with Mark, Luke, John, all the way through. Uh, so make sure that you are keeping up with your reading of the Bible as well. Page four is the uh, is bibliography uh, for you, and um, and then the graded rubric is on uh, page five. Uh, it's a straightforward rubric uh, since uh, the exam is uh, an in-class exam. Never given you a bit more of those details. So, well, that's that's it. This is a pretty straightforward class. It's on the front end of your studies, and so it's a little a little more manageable in terms of some of those details. I look forward to spending time with you and introducing you to uh, the studies that are going on around the New Testament as well as the New Testament itself. Uh, on the final exam, remember you will have a two-hour uh, limit. It'll be in class, no notes, and, um, and you'll, you know, it's more of an objective type of a question at that point. You'll be asked to tell what percentage of reading you've done. Uh, on that, and, uh, and so it has again three sections: Credit Cross and Crown, TNT Clark Handbook, in-class lectures, and you figure it'll be about 50 questions total. So, hopefully, you're looking forward to the class and looking forward to getting to know you. I notice on the class roster, most of you have not had class with me, so I look forward to uh, getting to uh, know you uh, and uh, this semester.